age we're meant to have sex, God wouldn't do what he does to our bodies. Speak for yourself. Well, that was not God. That was Dr. Nazir. Now, I can't believe you haven't worked with these other three women before. So what, what was it like? Did you get on? Oh, we were did. Were they egos? You know, I was a little worried going into it because I knew them superficially, but I didn't really know any of We're talking about Candy Bergen, Mary Steen Virgin, right. and Diane Keaton. And I mean, if they had all been divas, it would have been a not a very pleasant shoot. But they weren't. They were all complete menches. They were a lot of fun. We had a blast. Now, how did you get involved with this? This is a first time filmmaker, Bill Holderman, but he was a producing partner of Redford. And I wondered whether that connection was significant for you. No, not at all. And Redford fired him. Oh. <laughs> and the woman that he is partnered with in life and in professionally, she co-wrote the script. Redford fired both of them. And um, I think he didn't really want me to do the movie. I was doing a movie with him when I got offered Book Club. And, um, but it was my makeup artist and my hairdresser who said, you have to do this. This is gonna be very successful. You had input, you all had input into the script. Did you sit around and riff off one another? No, we did it more individually. We would meet with Aaron and Bill individually and talk through certain scenes. And, you know, like the scene um, when I am completely distraught and hung over and in bed and they dress me and send me out. You know, I kind of created that scene. Um, you receive a script and then you decide you're gonna do it and then you sort of begin to immerse yourself into the character and get to know her and you talk, you think about what her backstory is and you know, like all the things that I know about Vivian aren't even in the movie. Um, but, and then you think, well that scene, it's not quite right. And then you talk to the writer and you say, you know, what if it was more like this? That's the kind of thing that you do. And I think all of us did that. And ending up with Don Johnson isn't a bad thing. That was my idea. <laughs> I had seen him in a movie that was made by a young director named Chris Messina, who's also an actor. And, oh, he just impressed me so much, Don Johnson did. He had a depth that I didn't realize was there in him. And he looks better now than when he was younger, I think. There's so much character and beauty in his face. So when the time came to figure out who the, who the love interests were gonna be for each of us, I asked to have Don Johnson be mine. <laughs> I've known him since 1971. It's a nice position to be in, to pick your man. Yes. So women always pick their men. You know who taught me that? Catherine Hepburn. It's always women who choose their men, Jane. <laughs> what do you say? May a gentleman buy you a cup of coffee? Well, a gentleman certainly may. Do you know of one? You are a force of nature with everything that you take on. I mean, it's not just your work. It's the causes that you... I'm still an activist. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you... Well, I'm healthy. You know, healthy is so important. I'm, I'm, I have a lot of energy and I'm still healthy. My body's falling apart. I've had... This knee is, is bionic. This hip is bionic. The thumb has been replaced. How about that? <laughs> and this hip is going to be replaced in November. But aren't I lucky to live at a time when they can do that? You know, just put a new hubcap and a new fender on and off you go. <laughs> You've been a great promoter of, of women's rights, of uh, protecting women around the world. Uh, why did that become an issue for you? Because I'm a woman. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> yeah. I'm a, I'm a woman and I have seen what it does to a woman to have been sexually assaulted and raped or being disregarded and treated like chattel. I've been, I've had the good fortune to travel to the third world, the global south, parts of Africa, parts of South America, Central America, Russia, China, and, and I, I have seen up close what women have to endure in this patriarchal world of ours, and I want to do whatever I can to, to stop that, to end it. I know I will die before that happens, and now with the climate crisis, I don't know if we will survive as a civilization with patriarchy intact. I don't know, but I just want to be sure that I do whatever I can. It strikes me that you are very happy to share your life 
you know, warts and all, mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. Why? There's only one reason to have any desire to share your life, warts and all, and that is if it can um, help other people with their lives. And I have been doing it long enough and my memoir, which has been translated into 17 languages, um, the feedback that I have gotten from that shows me that my story um, does resonate with other people. What surprised me with, with men as well as women. We here today together with the multitudes across the country. Things like the futile attempt to become perfect. We're not meant to be perfect. Good enough is good enough. Um, is an important message and and just I think that it, my story helps other people have hope you know I love the fact that people will show me my memoir and it'll be all dog-eared and they'll be writing in the margins and I wanted a book that people would constantly be putting down because they'd be thinking about their own life off of what they had read about mine I just felt like I had to become a righteous activist I wanted my life to have meaning. You've been taking your public by surprise, invading army camps and getting yourself arrested. I'm proud of most of what I did, and I'm very sorry for some of what I did.